Now, I'm sure everyone recognizes our next guest. It's my second in command, Major Rick Tabor from the Anne County Sheriff's Office. Rick, welcome back to the show. Sheriff, thanks. Now, we did a, a very successful uh, sweep uh, a few weeks ago, and I want to talk to the audience about the sweep. Before we do that, I wanted to define a couple terms uh, that we utilize frequently on this show. Uh, you always hear about stings and sweeps, and people always ask me, you know, what's the difference between the two? Um, first off, one of the primary functions of the Sheriff's Office is to serve all the arrest warrants in Anne Arundel County. And that means if the Anne Arundel County police come out and, and take a, a burglar report uh, from your shed or your house, uh, and they conduct an investigation and get a warrant for someone, it actually comes to our office, mm -hmm. and our deputies serve the warrant. And it's everything from a minor crime all the way up to a homicide, rape, robbery, all the serious crimes. So it uncovers the, uh, the entire spectrum of all warrants. Uh, so every single day, our deputies go out and try to track people down, either at their business or acquaintances' house mm -hmm. or their own home. And we make arrests every single day, and we actually take them to the police stations to do the processing, fingerprinting, and photographing. Now, we also conduct sweeps. Sweeps are when we bring in a large number of deputies and we go out in mass, and we go out either targeting certain parts of the county based on some of their needs, the county's needs, uh, or in the entire county. And we'll actually go out in mass and make a lot of arrest. And it really, it's a hit or miss because uh, you don't know if these people are home or not. But uh, it's a safety factor involved because we actually go out, you know, in, uh, with a lot of deputies, and several times there are more than one deputy at, at a house, depending on the, the nature of the warrant. Now, we also do stings, and if you've heard, uh, since we, uh, we've, we've been in office, we've done a, a couple really neat creative stings. Uh, the first one was the Comptroller's office, where we told the bad guys and girls that we actually had a treasury checks for them for outstanding uh, tax refunds. And these are people that we have gone to their house, gone to their work, left business cards for them. I've actually mailed personal letters to a lot of them saying that you have an outstanding warrant on you, and if you want to turn yourself in to call me personally, and we, was going to, we were going to arrange to have a deputy meet them at a district location, northern, eastern, western, or southern, of their choice, and a, at a convenient time to them. And uh, we had a couple that uh, complied to that, but many of them did not. So we do these creative uh, stings where we lure them into a location. Now, another safety factor involved with stings is that we actually bring them in on our turf. So uh, they're less likely to have a weapon on them. They don't, they're not in their house where they know where all their knives and guns are located or you know, they might have a dangerous uh, animal there, a dog. Um, so when we do a stings, we actually lure them into a location. Uh, we also did the Flowers by Ron uh, sting where we actually did deliveries to them and people were expecting flower deliveries or party baskets if they were men and we got quite a few on that. Now, what you and I are going to talk about is uh, the sweep. We did a sweep uh, in the month of July that was a very successful sweep. And let's uh, talk about the target areas. Sure. Uh, it was early morning hours, July 19th of this year. We targeted uh, Pasadena, Glen Burnie, Odenton, Crofton. Uh, targeting these areas for people that had warrants on them, one of the subjects. And, and it ran the gamut from first degree assaults to thieves to drug dealers, drug users, and, and it was met with a lot of success. Uh, we utilize about 25 deputies and about six or seven civilian personnel. Uh, these are personnel that are pulling the warrants for, for our deputies and communications people. Anyway, we utilize these people. We went out and we arrested 41 people, uh, clearing 43 warrants on that particular morning. So it was very, very successful. And we actually had some, some, some people that were uh, purported gang members and uh, I'm not even going to give them the time of day to say what gang they were in. They don't deserve that kind of press. Um, but we actually got uh, some people that uh, are saying they are, are, are gang members who were, had outstanding warrants out on them. And uh, what was great about the July 19th operation was not only the numbers, because 41 arrests, 43 warrants uh, is a huge success, but it was very, very safe, very safe. And uh, no one was injured. Um, no one actually ran from us or tried to get away. Um, we, we, we went in there with a, a good show of force and came out with, with great numbers. Well, one story I do want to tell about, about the uh, sweep that we did on the 19th. That was the first time we utilized our new canine, Grimm. That's right. That's right. Uh, Grimm is a new canine that, that we were able to purchase through grant money who is cross-trained between explosive detection and a utility dog. A utility dog does tracking and, he, and things of that nature. So. 
uh, our deputies and K-9 Grimm went into a house. Uh, they knew the bad guy was there. They couldn't find him, couldn't find him. They went to, a, went to a bedroom, knew he was underneath the bed. So as opposed to exposing yourself and lifting the bed up, and let's face it, the guy's got a, a weapon. You're, you, you know, you're, you're very vulnerable. Uh, Officer Jason, Deputy Jason Jett said, all right, I'm going to cut the dog loose. As soon as he said that, the bad guy says, I give up, I give up. Yep. So we're able to utilize this tool, and none of our people got hurt. And the bad guy didn't get hurt. And uh, Grimm is a two-year-old Belgian Malinois uh, who has, uh, like the Major said, has a, a couple different uh, uh, tasks that it's able to perform. Uh, and it's amazing. It literally will respond a certain way depending on what kind of leash or lead is on the dog. If it has the one lead, it knows it's to be aggressive. Right. Perhaps bite. Bite it does. Uh, or track if it has another lead on it. So a uh, very interesting dog, and it, it really will flip-flop depending on what kind of uh, a leash is on it. And it's, it's really amazing. Um, Two-year-old dog, very happy dog to be around, but a definitely dog I wouldn't want latching on to me. Correct. And just the other day we were at the courthouse, and uh, Jason and Grimm were at the loading dock area, and uh, I think it was a state's attorney who brought his daughter in. Little girl, she was probably five. Can I pet the dog? And Jason didn't hesitate. hesitate. She's petting the dog, and I'm thinking, wow, if there was a different collar on this animal, it would be a different story. And that, that's how the dog knows what the job is for that moment. Certain collar for, for uh, weapons, certain collar for tracking, certain collar to be aggressive. And it's fascinating to watch him, watch, uh, watch him work. And then we actually uh, acquired Grimm through a, a federal grant, uh, that, and we actually got the dog down. It was North Carolina. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we actually send, send Deputy Jason Jett to North Carolina to pick out the dog and then to train with it for several weeks. And, and they bonded, and he definitely got a great feel for what kind of dog this was going to be, was going to fit our needs. So uh, uh, we purchased that dog with the, with the grant money that yet you found, and good job on that. Uh, grant money. Grant money. Uh, speaking of grant money, we're going to be doing a lot of the sweeps, such as we did on July 19th. Uh, the sweep on July 19th did not come out of county coffers, did not come out of our budget. That was, again, federal money. Uh, we were able to find $36,000 to be used for special projects just like July 19th for the next three years. So we're going to be out there a lot. We're going to be locking up a lot, a lot of bad guys, but it will not be costing immediate cost to county taxpayers, and it will not be coming out of our budget. So, so let's tell everybody, if you have a warrant out on you, and you can go to MarylandJudiciaryCaseSearch.com and check out your name, see if you have an outstanding warrant out on you. And if you have a warrant out on you, call the number on the screen, 410-222-1490 or 911 if you need to, or, and have an officer or deputy come pick you up, and we'll do that. Um, another number is our general number, 410-222-1570, 1570. Uh, we'll make sure to have a deputy uh, come out and meet you at a district station nearby your home or wherever you like to turn yourself in. But Let me take that even a step forward, if you will, Sheriff. Again, we're gonna, our deputies are out every day and every night. As I just said, we're going to be doing a lot of sweeps the next 36 months. Save yourself the inconvenience. Save yourself the embarrassment of being at home or being at work. If you need to, call my direct line. I'll make arrangements for you to turn yourself in, and that's 410-222-1389. And we'll, we'll, get you, we'll get you turned in and get you through the system, save the embarrassment. Let, let's get rid of these warrants and move on. Very good. And, and, and as you're about to hear me uh, showcase three wanted people from the sheriff's office, again, like you heard me talking with the Maryland State Trooper, Frank Logston, is many of our warrants are fail to appear. People just can't seem to show up for court. That's majority. Or they violate their probation. They can't seem to stick to the agreements of their probation. They can avoid so much trouble if they would just go to court and stick to their, their probationary uh, uh, guidelines. Exactly. Great. Major, thank you very much. My pleasure, sir. And I'll get started on our three wanted people. Okay.